Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. So in this video, let us discuss about the types of racemose inflorescence and this is just a part 1 and the part 2 will be provided at the next of this video. And coming to the types of the racemose inflorescence, first of all you have to know what is meant by racemose. I mean, what is meant by racemose inflorescence? The main axis will be unlimited in growth. That's nothing but main axis is nothing but for example, if you take this diagram or this blue color one which I have drawn is known as main axis. And there will be unlimited growth in this main axis in such a way that it depends upon the type of the uh, plant. I mean, so the main axis will be unlimited in growth where uh, it may be branched or unbranched. As if you see here, this is, uh, this is not branched. I mean, uh, it may be branched or it may be unbranched and never terminates into flower. I mean this main axis will not form the flower but it consists of flowers. If you see here this is the main axis, this main axis doesn't form any flower but it consists of flowers like this, it consists of flowers. Okay, either that flowers will be consists of stalk or else either it doesn't consist of any stalk. So what is meant by that stalk and everything I am going to explain to you later. So if you see in the diagram, the main axis is elongated, it may be branched or either it may be not branched. I mean it is unbranched or else and next it consists of flowers and remember these flowers are arranged in a acropetal manner so what is meant by acropetal so if you see here when the flower here if you see here this is the large this is the largest flower right and when you move towards upwards uh, there the, the you know the size of the flower will get decreases that's nothing but acropetal manner as the flower moves from the uh, down to up then the size of the flower will get decreased that is from the large size to the small size. So if you see here the size of the flowers which has presented the up position and the down position are totally different right. So that's, uh, that's that manner is called as the development manner is called as acropetal manner. So that's nothing but the racemose. So coming to the types of racemose inflorescence coming to the first one raceme. So raceme is uh, totally similar to the racemose which I have said enough as the name itself indicates it. The main axis is elongated if you see here this blue color one is nothing but main axis which is elongated and here the flowers consists of stalk. So what is the stalk? This green color one which I have drawn is known as stalk. So what is the main function of stalk? It mainly, it mainly helps in the attachment of flower to the main axis. This green color one will help, mainly helps in attachment of the flower to the main axis. Okay, so that's the main function of the stalk and these flowers are arranged in acropetal manner that's nothing but which i have said you know where with the where the flowers uh, from the bottom to the top when it when it moves from the from bottom to the top then the size of the flower will get decreased that's nothing but the acropetal manner and flowers are separately arranged if you see here the flowers are separately arranged like this separately so this is about the resume and the coming to the examples of this resume inflorescence mustard radish and gold moor so coming to the second one spike inflorescence so here here if you see here the main axis is elongated of course see here the arrow marks which i have drawn indicates it i mean the main axis is elongated where there will be where the growth will be unlimited here and the flowers are sessile sessile means sessile means unstocked where if you see in the case of resin what i have said you here the stock will be present this green color one which i have drawn here here the stock will be present but if you see in this case the stock will not be present where the flowers are directly attached here so if you see here this red color one which i have drawn around as flowers right and the flowers are separately arranged in an acropetal manner okay in an acropetal manner that's nothing but uh, from the bottom to the top the, uh, the range of the size of the flower will get decreased so the best examples of this spike in uh, if you, in this inflorescence is adatora cha flowers okay so in which is also called as acaranthus so coming to the third one panicle so if you see here it is called as branched racim i mean it will be similar to the racim but it is called as branched racim where uh, in this inflorescence if you if for example if you take a main axis and don't consider this main axis but this racim will be attached to this main axis in such a way that uh, all of these racims for example if you take this and if you consider this as a branch and this will be attached to your, towards this main axis okay hence it is called as branched racim to the main axis racim inflorescence is seen if you consider this you know main axis and to this main axis this resin branch can be seen like this and even if you see here properly to this in the structure if you see here the same as well as which i explained you in the resin uh, the same will be exhibited here but it is in the branched form where to this branched you know where to this main axis these branches can be seen which branches resin branches which i explained you in the first inflorescence so this resin branch and here also this resin branch the flowers will be arranged in a acropetal manner which consists of stalk which is in green in color so the best examples of this panicle is cisalpinia so coming to the fourth one catkin and in this type of inflorescence 
the inflorescence is pendulous and long so if you see here this is very long the pendulous uh, it is pendulous so if you see in the case of raceme the flowers are uh, consists of consists of stalk but if you see in the case of spike the flowers are sessile and if you see in the third one panicle the flowers are also uh, consists of stalk but if you see in the catkin here the flowers are sessile that's nothing but which consists of any stalk if you see here this uh, to this uh, you know to this main axis only all of these uh, flowers will get attached like this okay like this it will be arranged and this uh, you can't understand properly what i'm saying enough but if you if i show you the original pictures of examples then you can understand easily so the flowers are sessile which doesn't consist of any stock so that the flowers will get directly arranged but it is arranged in an acropetal manner that's nothing but from the uh, from the i mean i have drawn like this and if you if you slit the position towards uh, in a reverse way then this will be the down portion and this will be the up portion right so from the down to up the flowers will get uh, the size of the flowers will get decreased which is known as acropetal manner and the, it consists of unisexual flowers and examples are mulberry okay coming to the next one spadix and here the main axis is fleshy for example uh, if you have seen banana uh, the uh, the main axis of that banana will be very fleshy right so uh, and it will be enclosed by one or several large and brightly colored bracts and that modified bracts is known as spathe and here the flowers are sessile and unisexual sessile is nothing but which doesn't consist of any stalk like this which i have with the green color on which i have drawn and i have shown you in the previous slide right that that uh, you know that stalk is absent here where the flowers are directly attached towards the main axis so if you see here this will be the main axis and it will be enclosed by one or several large and brightly colored bracts so this total one all of this this total one is known as bract it will be enclosed by the bract this main axis will be enclosed by the bract and this main axis will be fleshy and the flowers are sessile sessile are nothing but uh, which doesn't consist of any stalk it will get directly attached towards this main axis itself and the flowers are sessile and unisexual that's nothing but if you see here male flowers and female flowers will be present the male flowers will be present at the top position and the female flowers will be present at the base position and between these both neuter flowers will be present and at the uh, you know at the apex region of this main axis the flowers will not be present okay so the best examples are banana and aroids collocation that's nothing but so coming to the next one spikelet so coming to the spikelet uh, the spikelets are arranged in spikes raceme or panicles so consists of axis and about two bracts so if you see uh, this will be the main axis and about two bracts will be present that bracts are cut nothing but glooms here so this is the one of the gloom and this is another gloom and reduce it to the pair bracts which are called as palea and lemma so these are known as palea and lemma this is palea and this is lemma so i am considering this as a you know i am considering this as a bracteoles because this inflorescence consists of bracts as well as the bracteoles and these are the bracts which i have said you these are the bracts and this is the bracteoles i am considering this as a bracteole but if you consider this as a bracts but you have to not consider this as a bracteole but you can consider this as a bracteole because uh, you know to, uh, towards this axillary position uh, you know this uh, inflorescence has been arranged so when this uh, inflorescence has been arranged from the axillary region then this type of uh, gloom is said to be as fertile gloom but normally it is said to be as empty gloom because it is because the inflorescence has not been arranged from the axillary region that's also meant the angle region of the gloom right so if the if the inflorescence has been arranged from the angle region that's nothing but the from the axillary region then the type of uh, gloom is said to be as fertile gloom whereas uh, if any if any type of uh, inflorescence has been not been arranged from this uh, axillary position and it is in a normal like this normal way then it is said to be as empty gloom so there are two empty glooms so you have to consider this as a bracts but if you consider this as a bracteole because uh, be because the axillary region the inflorescence has been arranged so this palea and the gloom are considered as i mean this palea and lemma which is which is considered as gloom 3 this is gloom 1 gloom 2 and this is gloom 3 but this is considered as bracteole and this palea and lemma are considered as bracteoles right palea and lemma which is considered as bracteoles and here lodicule will be present at this inflorescence at the at the at the, at the, de at the development of this axillary region there will be a presence of lodicule and this lodicule is nothing but the modified tepals okay and this is about the spikelet inflorescence and the best example of the spikelet inflorescence is spikelet so friends uh, these are the these are the type of racemous inflorescence and remaining there are three another type of inflorescence and i'm going to explain you it in a part 2 this is just a part 1 because the length of the video has been become longer and now i'm going to show you some of the 
pictures of examples of this type of inflorescence like resin spike and panicle all of these examples pictures i am going to show you now so that you people can easily